Here we are, uh, Math 3, um, this uh, homework, 7.1, um, Function Family Reunion. Uh, just a simple match. Um, I will also go over the stuff that we did at home if you still needed some help with that. So the main thing to understand here is what each type of function looks like in its equation form. Later on we'll do the, on the next page we'll look at how they look graphically and match those as well. Okay, but first let's talk about their equation. So for linear, linear is going to be in that slope intercept form where we have 1y, 1x, no squares, no anything like that. So linear would be c. Exponential has an exponent. Now the exponent is the variable, um, so it would be g because it has a number, that b stands in for a number. Whereas h, yes, it has a variable as an exponent, but it's on the x, okay? So exponential would be g. Quadratic, that's where you have x squared, so it would be e. For a polynomial, that's this guy. Okay, basically what it says is anything above a cube or so, you know, like something to the fourth, this would be a polynomial, or to the fifth, or so on. Okay, that's quadratic, or that's polynomial. Polynomial, there we go. Okay, rational, rational is a fraction, um, because fractions are rational numbers, so that would be f, that's the only one that's a fraction. Absolute value, those bars mean absolute value, so that one's a. Logarithmic, we haven't dealt with this one yet, but you can see we have one that says the word log. That's the ticket. Trig, we will learn about these later as well. Sine, cosine, tangent, those are trig, so you should be able to get that one. And then a radical, like the square root or the cube root. So that would be i. So that's what you should have ended up with there. Now, looking at their shapes, okay, the basic shape for linear is a straight line, so that would be f. For exponential, it's a curved line, um, but it usually starts around the x-axis and then curves up, so it would end up being d. The quadratic, that's the parabola shape. We should know that's c. Okay, polynomial is a shape kind of like a quadratic, but has a little more to it, so that's actually b. And that's only one type. There's a lot of other parent types. Rational, that one's the weird one. It's actually E, and we'll deal with that later. Absolute value is kind of like quadratic, but as a V instead of a, a U shape. The logarithmic is H. Starts low and then curves up. Trig is a periodic, where it goes kind of repeats that same pattern, uh, which makes the radical A. Okay? So that's what you should have ended up with on those two homeworks. Now, I know that we didn't quite get far enough in this, and there were some that wanted to um, probably look at this further or get some more help with it. So um, I'm not going to do, well, I will do number one. I'll do the ones we did in class. So remember, the idea here is that we're using this formula, a times x minus h plus k. Now, those parentheses stand in for any one of these, okay? So in number 2, it would be a times x minus h squared plus k for a times x minus h to the square root plus k, absolute value, a absolute value, okay? Um, the difference is, instead of actually writing down that function, they use the f of x to stand in for it. But it's the same concept. Okay. And just a reminder, with A, if A is a negative number, it gets reflected. If it's bigger than 1, it makes it skinnier. That's a vertical stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, and these, whether it's positive or negative, the negative does the reflection. So, you know, take away the negative, and, and that's what we're dealing with. If it's less than 1 but greater than 0, then that is a horizontal stretch. Okay, H here moves us right or left. 
and we think opposite. So inside of parentheses, if it's minus, we go to the right. If it's plus, we go to the left. And then k is that vertical shift, so it's up or down. Positive up, negative down. It's not inside of parentheses. So the first problem we got is f of x equals x. So that's just your basic linear parent graph. Okay, then a is, well, let's not say a. The first problem is negative f of x. Okay, so it's being multiplied out front. Multiplied always deals with a, so a negative would reflect it. So this whole thing would just be reflected over the x-axis. Oh, that wasn't very good. So we draw our line right there. And that's all we had to do for part A. Okay, so part B now, notice it's 1 half times f of x. Once again, that's dealing with the A part, and it's in between, so it means it makes it it's a horizontal stretch, so it's like we're stretching this line out to the left and to the right. And we're doing it by one half, so it's actually like we think of that space right here cutting this space in half. Okay, so I'd end up doing it about right there. Now, I'm not looking for super accuracy on your graphs. If I wanted that, I'd have you just graph it on a graphing calculator or Desmos. But this time, we're just doing it to uh, get a feel for these main transformations. Okay, The last one, f of x minus 5. Notice the 5 is outside the parentheses, so that would be k. It's negative, so that would be down. So we just move down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Draw that same line. A little better than that, probably, though. It's basically parallel even though that one didn't look too good of being parallel. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. So let's look at 2. f of x equals x squared. So that's going to be a parabola, something like this. Okay, the first one is f times x plus 6. Notice that plus 6 is inside the parentheses. So that's the h, and because normally the formula is minus, that plus 6 is going to mean we're going to go to the left 6. I know you want to say the right, but it's actually the left when we draw that same shape. So it would look like that. Okay, now b, it's plus 4, it's outside the parentheses, so that's the k, which moves it up or down, so it would move it up 4 we'd have that same basic shape. Okay, now c is 2 times f of x, so that's the a. So it's greater than 1, which means it's a vertical stretch. So we take that same vertex, and we're just going to make it basically skinnier by about double. Okay, so it looks something similar to that. The main point is that it's just skinnier. That's really all we care about on that one. Okay. All right. Next up, I believe we have f of x equals absolute value of x. So that's going to look like this, a v-shape. There's our parent graph. Okay, now our first graph. Now we got a couple things happening here. So let's write this one down. So we got negative 3 f of x plus 4. If I were to put it in that other format, it would be negative 3 absolute value of x plus 4. So it's outside the parentheses, so k. So it's going to bump it up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our vertex. If that's all we did, it would look like that. But we're not just doing that. This negative reflects it. So if it was just negative, we would just have it go down at the same. But it's more than that. It's also a 3, which means it's going to have that vertical stretch. So it's going to actually end up being a lot skinnier by 3 by uh, mul multiples of 3, okay? So it would look like that. Now number 2 for B. So now we've got this minus 7 on the inside. That's H, and it's opposite. So we're going to go to the right 7, 
and then the plus 2 outside means we go up 2. So from this vertex, I go to the right 7, and up 2. And then it's that same basic shape. And that's part B. Now C, we've got the A and the H on the inside. So the H on the inside is a plus, so we think opposite because it's inside parentheses. So it's like a negative one, so we move it to the left one. Then one-fourth, it's not negative, so it keeps going up. But one-fourth means it's got that horizontal stretch pulling at it, so it's actually going to end up being a lot wider. It's by about a fourth, so we think really wide here. And it'll look something like that. Now our next step for 4 is a square root of x. So square root of x looks basically like that. Okay. So first step, now we have a negative on the inside. We didn't really talk about that. But just like the outside negative reflects it over the x-axis, an inside negative reflects it over the y. So it'll actually end up just looking like this. Pretty simple. Okay, now b has an outside negative, so it's going to reflect it down, plus the inside parentheses, the h, is going to move it to the left 3, because it's opposite. So I move it to the left 3, but then it reflects down, so it's going to look like that instead. Okay, then C. We've got the A of 2, so it's going to be narrower. It's going to pull it up at a higher rate. And the minus 3, it's outside parentheses, so it'll bump it down 3. So we bump down 3, and then it's going to go up at a quicker rate. And it'll look like that for the C. Alright, next up we have a cubic function. So f of x equals x cubed. That one looks kind of like this. So, we start off with the negative one-fourth. So that's going to make it wider, and then an inside number, that's going to move it horizontally to the right 2, because it's already minus. So we move it over to the right 2, that kind of same point, and then it's going to be flipped. So if we just normally did a flipped, it would look like that. But we are also going to make it wider because of that 1 fourth. So it's going to kind of come out like this. It would look like that, something like that. Okay, the next one just is plus 6, so we just move the whole thing up 6. Basically just kind of parallel it. And then we've got it where it's inside just plus 4, so that's to the left 4. Because it's opposite. So we just look something like that. Okay. And there we go with that one. So next up, we've got the cube root. So the cube root is really related to the square, uh, to the cube. It's just going to be flipped. So the cube root just simply looks like this. So now the same things apply. A, we're just bumping it down one because it's the K, it's outside. So I just move the whole thing down one and essentially just follow right along with it. Okay, then the B, we've got the H, plus 2, so that's to the left 2, and a minus 4, so that's going to be down 4. So we move it to the left 2, down 4, and essentially that same shape happening. Okay, then the last one, we've got that minus 2, so to the right 2, but that 3 is also going to make it skinnier. It's there. Well, it's kind of wider because it's a vertical stretch. It's stretching it up and down. So 2 to the right. And then that vertical stretch means that it's going to come up at a higher rate and go down at a higher rate. So basic concept kind of like that. All right. 
Now let's take a look at the last four, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So two to the x, two to the x goes through here one, has an asymptote of the x-axis, and then it's gonna go up about like that. Okay. So well, that's f of x equals two to the x. So then f of negative x, remember the negative on the inside means that we just flip it over that y-axis, so it's going to look like that. Then a plus 5 on the inside, so that's to the left 5, so we just take the whole thing and shift it to the left and treat it exactly the same way. Then minus 2, that's outside, so that's going to take it down 2. So this goes down 2, and we treat it the same way, basically making it parallel. And that's all we got to do on that one. Okay, now we're back to just f of x equals x. So here's my parent graph. So now we're going to vertically stretch and flip over the y. Flipping over the y would make it look like that. To vertically stretch it by 2 makes it go at a steeper slant. And that's all you gotta do on that one. Um, for the next one, we've got a negative outside that reflects it across the x, and then we're adding 3. So we bump it up 3 right there. And then we go that opposite way without a vertical or horizontal stretch. And finally on that one, we move it to the right one with that H and with the K down one. So we move over to the right and down one. And then we draw basically a parallel line because it's the still the same type of line. All right. Now I believe we got f of x equals x squared again. So that's our parabola. We adjust it first by, that should probably be one, negative one fourth. So we reflect it across the x, reflects across the x, and it's also gonna be horizontally stretched, so it's gonna be wider. Then we've got a minus 2 on the inside, that's the h, so we move it to the left, or no, to the right 2. Got to remember, it's always opposite. So to the right 2, then we reflect it, and we make it quite a bit wider. Okay. Um, negative again, so we reflect it. This time, plus 3 on the inside, so we move it to the left 3. One, two, three. Still, we don't stretch it out this time, but it is still reflected. And then the last one, this time we vertically stretch it so it makes it skinnier, and then we just move it down three. Down three, and then it's a lot skinnier. Okay. All right, last one, absolute value. So our parent function, the absolute value, looks like this. Okay, first thing we do is we reflect it, and then 3 makes it vertically stretch. Then a plus 4 is going to bump it up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, then we stretch it down. And this one actually is this the same exact? No, the first one was the same exact, but it looks like the rest are different. So we actually already did that one, but that's all right. Okay. Then we've got an h of plus two, so to the left two, and minus four for k, so down four. So one two one two three four, and then everything else stays the same. And then our last one, times it by 3, vertically stretch, 
and then just move it to the right too. So one, two, and then vertically stretch it. And there we go. Now, if you needed some help visualizing that, if you either download the Desmos app or go to desmos.com, I believe you can graph them by typing in f of x equals and then whatever the thing was. Um, and that'll show you that graph. And then I want to say if in the next line, if you go like just negative f of x, it'll show you that. Or 2 times f of x minus 1 plus 3, it might show that too. I'm not sure, but you can check that out to see if you still need to try to help. But there we go. There's all those extra ones we did to see some more. And there's our homework. And we're done.